So this is part five to the world's best monster truck build. But we have a few problems, and in this video, we're gonna try and fix them. But anyway, we've got the best shocks, the best axles, all the best running gear, the best chassis, the best tires, my favorite body, the Chevy C10. We've got all the best components on the axles. We've got all the CRD knuckles, champagnes, hubs, Overson heavy duty spindles, Overson yokes, big block Chevy alcohol injected supercharged engine on the way. We've got a custom made one off Patrick housing and shafts inside to make this monster truck wider than most other monster trucks. And some of you guys said, but Kev, it's not the best monster truck, is it? Well, to me it is. I've bought all the parts exactly how I want it. So like for Dennis Anderson, Gravedigger is the best truck to him. For me, this is the best truck for me. And some people say, what about Whistling Diesel? Well, he can't really backflip it. He can't jump it 40 foot in the air. He can't do 100 mile an hour and he cannot do zero to 60 in three seconds. We can. So to me, this is the world's best monster truck. Give me a thumbs up if you agree or a thumbs down if you disagree. But we do have a few minor issues. I've got the engine on the way. Hopefully the video after this one will be the engine fitting video but for now while we're waiting on the engine we've got a couple of little things that we've got to sort out we've already gone over the wheels not fitting on the hubs so we have to get these sent off and modified the seat needs some modifications because these shoulder bits here are too wide and they don't reach me but some of you guys said Kev you've got to put your race suit on first because that adds a bit of padding so we're going to try that first but I still think we've got to cut it down this drive shaft safety cage we had to slightly modify it. It was a little bit too long and it wouldn't go on. So I had to cut off one of these. I didn't do it on camera because I thought it's boring. Uh, but now I think we're not to regulations. The rules say that in between these two loops, it can be no more than seven inches. And if we look here, this is much more. We've got about 12 inches there. Cut these tubes off of there and then try and weld it back on there. We just had some aluminium angle turn up so we can now mount the steering valve. We've also got gauges, pedals, and the seat we still got to fit in properly. So enough waffle, more action, more wrenching. And then next Monster Truck video, we're gonna fit the engine, yes. So that is in there. Still got to make a little bracket here just to go around that bit. So next, we've got to weld that onto there. And for that, we've got to take all this lot apart again. There we go, a little bit of paint on there, so it'll look lovely. If it doesn't, we'll just have to get it repowder coated. Next, let's have a little look at the seat. So the seat doesn't really fit properly. The shoulder things are too far apart, but I think first, before we do any adjustments, I need to get myself strapped in there as tight as I can. I need to get the lap belt on there. So we're gonna fit that, strap myself in, and then see how it all lines up. So we've got to mount this seat belt round about here somewhere. <laughs> So just temporarily bolted that on there. We've still got to get the proper wash on, the proper little collar in there, and the proper bolt. But for now, we can strap ourselves in, see how tight it is, and then see how much adjustment we've got to make to the rest of the seat and the seat belts. So you've got to run these seat belts so tight that we actually run a ratchet on there. So once you've got yourself all buckled up, just crank away on here and really strap yourself in tight. Any movement at all in the seat, could lead to injury. And I know it's only a toy, but we're in it. So we've got to do it properly. So where these shoulder pads are, it's got a big gap there and it's supposed to be a lot closer. Also, if we have a look here, look, 
It's going to hit the metal work, so I need to get a bit lower down in the seat. Also, we've got to run this hands device here, so you put it on like that. Mm. And that attaches to your helmet, and it stops you getting whiplash. But that's going to make the harnesses even higher. So we're going to take a little bit out of the seat base to try and get me down a little bit lower. I've got no idea what we're doing, but if I get it wrong, I might die. So I best not get it wrong. But anyway, the seat belt goes on like this. And I'm trying to do it one-handed. And then if we look over here, we have a ratchet. So we crank away. Another one on this side. Uh, uh, oh, I can't breathe. Uh, oh my God, that is tight. Apparently that's how you're supposed to run it. So it's probably brought me down a little bit lower, but we're still, nah, I think we're too close to this piece of metal here. I can't breathe. Uh, apparently that's how tight you gotta run it. So we can get that out of here. If we mess up, guys, we can always stick it back on again. So we're going to stick all this back on again in a minute, but first, let's chuck it in the truck and make sure that it fits right. Uh, we're in. Oh, it's definitely better here now. Shoulder pads at a better angle. Definitely feels a lot better. That'll do. We are in. Next, let's have a look at the race suit. Oh, it looks professional. Look at that. We've got a little bit of padding there. Not that much to make a difference, but we better get it on anyway so we can get the seat adjusted properly. Look at that. We're getting professional. <laughs> <laughs> I still way, way off. How, how much is that? Two inches. So we've got to get that there somewhere the old cut off engine controls we can reach it there rear steer there right so these harnesses here they need to be higher up so these slots are actually too low down i'm gonna have to cut this slot out and make it bigger because if these push down on your spine apparently that's really bad for your back so we've got to raise them up the days of this being too easy is coming to an end now this seat really doesn't really fit me properly guys we're going to modify it for now we're going to use it for now but i think ultimately we're going to buy a new seat so i had like a massive massive waiting list on getting seats made and this is one they already had kicking around um and it's supposed to kind of fit me but it kind of doesn't so it'll do for now but later we're gonna buy another one they're not actually too expensive couple of grand custom made can't really complain a lot of work going to these look all custom made all nicely tig welded all aluminium <laughs> Next, we've got to deburr it. We don't want any sharp edges on there that can cut into the belt. And this little tool here makes easy work of it. And you can also get the inside with it, look. Beautiful. Boom, didn't come out too bad. But we've got to make these holes in the cover a little bit bigger, so, mom. Oh, look, eBay parcel. Boom. Man, eBay is just perfect for getting the odd little bits and pieces of metal. Usually you would have to buy a whole entire six meter plus length. But if we just need a few little pieces, eBay is perfect. Man, I love eBay. It helps you build monster trucks. You can make a living from it. You've got to raise the seat up slightly. So we've got to knock these off and make some slightly longer ones. So next, we've got to put a tube across here so we've got somewhere to mount the seat belt. Right, so we've got the brackets all tacked on. We've got that bolt on there. It took a little while to get the height right. If you have it too high, you fall out, and too low, you break your spine. So we've got it just right, so next, Let's weld it up and then we can fit it on. That'll do. That's the nice thing about TIG welding. You can get it nice and smooth. You don't really need to grind it or anything afterwards. Next, we've got to mount the seat to this track on the back here. I think I'm going to put two mounts on here. I think this here is the official mount we're supposed to mount the seat to. So we're going to fold a bit of angle here to go onto here. I'm going to get the top mounted first. I think the top doesn't need to be as secure. So I'm just going to put a bit of aluminium across. We've just got a brand new forklift turned up. Well, it's not fully new. And I've never actually driven one, so we've got to learn. How do we do it, Samuel? Start her up, come on. Start her up, how do we do it? Is there a clutch? Is that a... No, no. No? Oh, no. Oh, that's up. Whoa, 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 what are we doing? <laughs> ah, this is easy, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I think we can have a land 
tip it over. Alright, <laughs> right, that's pretty easy. Now we have to try and park it next to that without killing it. That's it, fully certified. <laughs> Look at it in all its glory. Back to work on the monster truck. Oh, the gap's a little bit bigger than I was hoping for. Let's see if we can fill it up anyway. Oh my good God, what a mess. It's all good, we have a grinder. Look at that, no one will ever know. Here we go, time to redeem myself. Nah, made a mess of it. I don't know what's going on guys, I think. The metal must be contaminated on a wire. I don't know, I've done a little piece on here and that came out a lot better. I'm not really an aluminium welding expert, I can do it, but if it doesn't work out, no idea what I'm doing wrong. If you know what I'm doing wrong, let me know in the comments. That seat in there is now solid. But we still need to make something to tie this piece here onto this track here. So we've got to bolt this bracket here onto the back of the seat to make something to tie it onto this back of this track here. Oh no, guys, this piece here is actually hollow, look. I thought this was actually a solid piece of aluminium. So now if we put a bolt through there, it's gonna crush it. So I don't know what to do. So maybe we can just mount it up here. Uh, bracket's a bit too long, so we can just cut it down. <laughs> So we've got a bracket on the seat, a bracket on the frame, so all we need now is a bit of flat bar, weld it across there and boom. We've got our plate and we'll just hold it in there with a magnet and then we can tack it in place. got it all tacked up and then we'll weld it up properly once we take the seat out again later on so next we've got to fit a crutch strap that's what goes between your legs and keeps the lap belt pulled down it goes through that hole in the middle of the seat comes down here and we've got to attach it down here somewhere i'm thinking of just wrapping it around a tube like this so here's the rule book and this is how you're supposed to build monster trucks there we go for the harnesses through the middle of the seat it's got to go forward a little bit So here we've got the tube, we've got the belt on there, and we've just got to weld it in like that. This steel here has got this coating on it, it's called mill scale. It's actually a residue when they form the metal, when it's all molten, all the impurities of the metal, they stick to the surface. But the welder doesn't really like welding to it, so we just grind it off a little bit, and the welding is going to be lovely. <laughs> So for now, it's just tacked in. Once we're fully happy, we've got everything else mounted, and then we're gonna take the seat out, and we're gonna weld it all up properly. Next, we've got this rear stiffener bar that we have to tack in. So that is the seat fully mounted now. We've still got to make these here a little bit narrower. I'm not in the mood of doing it now. So next, let's get the pedals in and see how they line up. So here we've got the acceleration, and that's gonna go there somewhere. Here's the brake pedal. I've got a bit of aluminium tread plate here that I'm gonna bolt onto here. When you're getting bounced about in these monster trucks, it's easy for your foot to come away from the pedal. So that gives you more chance of hitting the brakes. So that is gonna go there somewhere. And if we look underneath, you can see we've got this track that we've got to bolt it to, and it can pick up hopefully, on some of these holes we've got under here. So we've got to drill through those holes and through this aluminium floor here, and then we can bolt it on. So we got it kind of in, so this hole and the hole at the back here, these ones line up, but this one and that one doesn't. Also, the angle of it is not quite right. I think your foot is really supposed to sit like this, but that's a really unnatural position and it hurts. 
So I think we've got to make a bracket so we can tilt this up a little bit, get a nicer angle, and then all the bolt holes are also gonna line up. <laughs> Getting closer, guys. So next, we're gonna have a little play with the shock absorbers. We have the main man, Tony from Swamp Thing in the house. He's also got a YouTube channel, and he's got one of the UK's, or actually the UK's top monster truck. At the moment, at until, the... until this thing's done. <laughs> anyway, link to Tony's channel down below. What are we doing? Uh, well, we're gonna check out the prop shop, because we've got a bit of engagement down here. But we just want to know we, how much the prop shaft moves when we take the truck for its articulation. So we've got the jack on the front and we can jack it up to see how much it moves when we go through the travel. That's one thing we like to check. So we've got an adapter in here, so it's adjustable. So when it's on its big wheels, we can actually take the pins down and do it. But this is done, so it's on its little wheels. So we can just use the jack and just jack up the body. So <laughs> That's a good jack, isn't it? That's a good jack. Where'd you get that one from, Tony? Who's well, it? It's yours, <laughs> it ain't mine. hundred mil there. From being low to up, it's only moved two mil. I was worried that that blue paint on there, I thought that's like the limit of the drive shaft. No, no, that, so that bit of paint, it probably goes to about back here. So you've got a lot of engagement in there. That was when I assembled it. And that's how much blue paint's on there. So we're good to go. MTRA will be happy. Oh, what have we got here? So this is what you use to set your shock absorbers up. So we've got a nitrogen regulator. So stainless steel brake hose. That's the little bit that screws on the shock absorbers. So you just basically wind that on hand all the way in. So that lets the, the nitrogen go into the shock absorber. But after you finish setting your press, you wind that down and that's what stops all the gas coming back yeah. out. Just use it. You can start feeling pressure going in there now. Is that normal, that noise? Yeah, because yeah, you're actually putting pressure on the, on the accumulator on the back of the piston. So in there, so you've got nitrogen on this side, there'll be a solid piston, and on all the rest of this, is, this is fluid on this side, so this is oil on this side of it. So how do you pump it up? Just... We just turn the gauge, so we're, uh, uh, now we're at 100 psi. Oh, and it, and, it just, and it just stops? Yeah, so then what you do then, is just when you finish that, you can just turn it back a little bit. It won't come down, Yeah. because we haven't let any out. If you, if you went too high, so you put too much pressure in, yeah. just get the spanner, drop a little bit out, so, you, okay. so the gauges come down. There you go. So now, we bounce on it, can we move that to the same I bet it won't even move. You're gonna have to have a few more pies. You can't move it at all. It's moving a little bit. So I just want to give a shout out and a massive thanks to Tony from Swamp Thing 4x4. He's been giving me loads of advice and tips off this build so far. He made me this great big socket thing here for getting the hub nuts off. He made me up this nitrogen shock charging kit. He's always on the other end of the phone to offer advice and help. So head over to Tony's YouTube channel and show some love. Link down below. Look at that, it's a whole load of monster truck action. He's got a whole load of behind the scenes stuff like bodywork, gearboxes, action and basically everything monster trucks. So check out Swamp Thing 4x4 and give him a subby. So next we're gonna get the body or at least the front end and the cab back onto the truck because when we mount all these switches and all our gauges we want to make sure that we don't put them anywhere where it's going to block any vision. So by putting the body on we can see where all the blind spots are on the body and that's where we can mount all the gauges and all the switches. And the engine has just been shipped to me and it's been air freighted and it should be here in the next few days. We're also getting these wheels and tyres sent away to get modified so this truck should be working. Hopefully not too much longer. Boom! And just like that we've got the body back on. And here's the view we got. So we want to mount all the gauges sort of along here somewhere where you're not going to be blocking any vision. But I can't mount any gauges yet because the clamps that I need to clamp it onto the roll cage, they come with the engine. And the engine's going to be here the next few days. And look at that, with the body out of the way, we've now got a perfect home for the forklift. Then the next video is going to be putting that engine in and hopefully getting the bad boy running. Yes! Hopefully even driving. So subscribe and smash the bell so you don't miss it.